late 2018, Dax hits me up. He's like, yo, let's get another collab in. Let's do a, let's do a one take freestyle. All right, here we go. Let's roll camera. Juice in the oven. Life is an everyday struggle, but keep to yourself, homie. You know, Dax, he does his one take freestyle things where he's walking down the street and just, it's just one take. Ask any rap about Dax, and I promise that nigga gonna say they don't know me. I meet him in person. They say to the homie, then I get the word that the nigga are phony. We had that in mind at first, and when he came to my house, I just came up with this cool, dark melody, this. And then you, you had the lower piano. You should have knew I was coming. Bitch, you should have knew I was coming. Bitch, you should have knew I was coming. And instantly he was like, woo! I was like, yeah. Then we both just kept saying in the studio and we were just like mumbling stuff like, you should have knew I was coming. Two days later, we got back in the studio, recorded the whole entire song. And I was like, man, I don't think this, I don't think we should do a one take freestyle on this. I feel like this song is bigger than that. So I was like, man, let's shoot this shit next week. Like, I got a team, they gonna move real fast on it. He was like, cool, let's do it. So I hit up my homie Moses Israel. Hobson featuring Dax, Dax's million dollar yeah, performance, yeah, check it out. We went location scouting for this video and we found an old Navy base. Not old Navy like the clothing, but actual Navy people. I was telling Dax, we need a lot of fans for this. Within like five or 10 minutes, we got like 500 people. Moses called me, the producer, he was like, yo, Take down the take down the posts. Too many people. Too many people. Too many people. We got more than enough. Our call time was like maybe six, six or seven a.m. Only seen it in about a minute. Um, as soon as Hobson's done, I'm bringing him over. Right when we got there, Dax was supposed to go to like you know hair, makeup, and wardrobe so they can make sure he's good. He showed up to the set. He didn't know what the fuck was going on. And you know I just automatically assume people know what's going on in like videos. So Dax is funny because. He had never been on a, a production that big, so he just stayed in his car. Like he just he just played it safe. Like I'm staying in my car and I'm gonna wait till Hobson tells me. Um, Dax gets taken care of, then you know I go to hair, makeup, wardrobe, and all that stuff. The first scene that we shot of the day was me in the woods, which wasn't really woods. It was the back of a like someone's house. We made it look like it was woods, but it was not woods at all. And I wanted that scene to kind of resemble. You know, the towards the end of the movie in Bird Box, where they're all walking around with the kids and everything, and, and they and the pe they have blindfolds on, and they're just trying to feel their way around, and they don't know if someone's near them or not, and they're holding a gun, just trying to make you know, just trying to play it safe. I wanted the extras to mimic that scene in Bird Box, and I wanted to be the actual like one of the crazy people that that's just there, who's not affected. I don't need a blindfold. The second one was the scene in the car. It was the convertible coupe. And I just wanted that one because in my verse I say, pulling up in a convertible coupe and I'm stunned. You should have knew I was coming. I'm a gamble like dice roller, hit it blindfolded. Right after the, the convertible coupe scene, we went right into the scene where the, it was the ending of the music video where Action. the women have their two newborn babies and I walk in the All room. Right. Can that work? All right, cool. Great. Over the shoulder? Yeah, over the shoulder. Over so. the room, I watched the movie and that guy came in and he's all creepy. I'm like, that shit is hilarious. I gotta put that in the video. That scene was really fun. When I thought of the concept of the video, I was like, I can't wait to do that part. That part's just gonna be funny. You should have known, damn. Bitch, you should have knew I was coming. And then I think after that, we went to lunch. Cause that put us around, put us out around 12 p.m. After lunch, I gathered all the fans in the middle of the street where we were gonna be shooting. And then after that, you guys can post whatever you want. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see y'all in a little Woo! bit. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And they were all so chill, they were all so cool. I was like, man, these fans are really fucking awesome. The rooftop scene was kind of scary because it was slightly raining just a little bit. And rooftops have grip on the top, but it was sketchy. So we had to get a ladder to get up on the rooftop. And these are old ass roofs as well. Like these are not like brand new, freshly paved. These shits are from like fucking 1920 or some shit. I don't fucking know. You know me, I'm like a little monkey. I can climb anything. If I fall down, it's not a big deal. Cause I'm like, I, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm just that person where when I fall down, it's not a big deal. But Dax is like a, he, he's really, he's a really beefed up big dude. And I just kept having a vision. I'm like, man, if he falls off of this rooftop, it's gonna be really bad. <laughs> We did maybe like five or six takes up there. The first few takes, they're kind of rusty. And then I started feeling it out, you know, throughout the takes. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna start moving around a little bit more. So that's why you can, you can tell like 
I was just kind of playing up there. So at the end of the video, I was just like doing little stupid dances just because I was just trying to find my groove on that rooftop because it was kind of scary. The scene came out really good. We, that scene specifically, we had to do some sky replacement on it because the clouds in the sky, it, or the, the, the sky was very gray, it didn't look too good. We wanted it to feel more sinister. After that, it was time for the big scene. Back. Yeah, one back. Stay in one spot, and it's just Keep moving. Act like a lot of I'm not gonna lie. I'm jealous of this scene. I'm, I'm very jealous. I'm, I'm mad about this scene. I wanted this scene. I gave it to Dax because you know I wanted, I wanted to see him shine. But I was like, man, I want this scene so bad. This is that was a killer fucking scene. But Dax fit it perfectly. So he is the invisible entity that makes people commit suicide, kill themselves, and go crazy. It was supposed to be just like no one could see him, but he's just making everybody go nuts. The cop shoots himself in the head, you know. Bitch, you should know I was coming. And I also wanted it to be a metaphor as to like what he's doing because he's just stirring up fucking madness in the game right now. You know, he's up and coming and He's just making everybody look and just making everybody go, what the fuck is going on? How is this dude getting so big? What is he doing? What's happening? Hi, I love you. All right. Wow. This motherfucker is walking through and it's cold as fuck outside. Keep this in mind. His shirt, that the little jacket he was wearing, Dax don't wear it, believe in t-shirts. He only buys jackets. When you, when you, it's just jackets only. Ain't no t-shirts for Dax. The shit was as thin as a piece of paper. He's wearing this jacket just, and I'm like, Yo, are you cold? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, goddamn. But you know, he got he got to stay in the Dax image. He got He got He. I know he was cold as fuck. Everybody was dying from cold. And Dax is here with his motherfucking shirt off, not giving a fuck. I'm like, man, this, this dude is crazy. But he, he's hungry for it. Right after the video shoot, to, I promised all the fans that I would stay with them. There was like a hundred of them. I told them I would stay, sign autographs for them all, take pictures whatever shout out videos whatever they wanted because dude they spent the whole day with me and Dax just getting this video done they didn't have to do that so I'm like I'm not gonna be the asshole like I'm gonna I'm a, I, I want to give my fans what they want you know I, and I want to put that good energy out there and if one of them becomes famous one day and they're a rapper or an actor or whatever they do I want them to show that type of love to their fans as well and to the people who admire them because I just feel like that makes the world a better place shout out to the amazing crew Shout out to Moses Israel for putting it all together and having an amazing team to bring my vision to life. Shout out to Dax for being an amazing artist and you know being easy to work with and having good vibes that inspire me and inspire the world. You know, and shout out to the fans who all came out and showed support and I love you guys. This is the behind the scenes of you should have knew I was coming. Hope you guys enjoyed it and see you next time. You knew I was coming. Oh yeah, and before this video ends, shout out to Mario Garcia Dennis. What the fuck is his last name? Garcia Den Garcia Duenas. What is it? He's behind the camera right now. Garcia Duenas. Garcia Duenas. He's the guy behind the camera. He shot the whole behind the scenes shit. Shout out to this motherfucker right here. He's been very helpful for the past fucking eight months, helping me shoot all this behind the scenes shit that I've been giving you guys, or you're going to get regardless, whatever. I don't know. Anyways, cut the video, man. It should have been done a long time ago. Get the fuck out of here.